Are you ready to get into the Word? As you can, as you can see up here, you're, you're seeing a lot of seed bags. And the reason that you see these seed bags is because we've actually been talking in the, uh, concerning the real issues of life. We've been talking about how the Word of God is the seed that is sown into our hearts and how the Word of God is what we want inside of us that will cause us to be successful in every area of our life, wherever you are, wherever you go, whatever you do. And I'm, just, I'm not just sitting here talking about money or prosperity. I'm talking about spirit, soul, and body. Total, complete success in every area of your life. Now, the why is it so important for us to talk about seed? Because the Bible says that the Word of God is God's seed. In it is the DNA that causes the life to come forth. And whatever we sow in our lives, we become literally a walking history book of seed that has been sown in our life. You can go back and look at your history, and your history from the day that you were born and you were able to understand people talking into your life. People sowed seed into your life. Family members, friends, peers, education, whatever it may be, seed was constantly being sown into your life. A lot of our conduct, a lot of our behavior, a lot of the events in our lives, uh, places where we've been, things that we have done, it's because somebody influenced our life. Somebody sowed seed on the inside of our life. So therefore, when I say sow seed, sow seed into what? Sow seed into the soil of our life. The soil in our life is our hearts. And that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to see what Jesus uh, said about this. If you understand what Jesus said concerning the sower sowing the word, the Bible says, he said, you'll understand everything that there is concerning life and about the word. The Bible says in our, our, our springboard scripture is this. It's Proverbs, the fourth chapter, verse 23. And I'm going to read this out of the New Living Translation. Listen to what it says. Guard your heart, which your heart remembers your soul. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. In other words, the very things that we've been involved in in our life, the very journey, the, the path that we take is because somebody has spoken in our life. Somebody has influenced us. They've either influenced us for good or they have influenced us for bad. Some people believe this, whatever will be, will be. So there's no use to pray, there's no use to do anything. That's, that's almost a Calvinistic type of doctrine of predestination. Of You have no choice, you have no say-so in your life, and it's already, it's already there, so whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. Well, I'm going to tell you this right now. That is a fatalistic type of believing. You have a responsibility as a believer, as a born-again believer. You have a responsibility in your life. Some people erroneously think that success just happens or that some people are just lucky all the time or because of what family that somebody came from or success is just for a certain group of people. But according to Mark the fourth chapter, and I want you to turn there, according to Mark the fourth chapter, verse 13, Jesus lays all of that type of thinking to rest. Here's what Jesus says. Jesus gave us a lesson on how our future will be determined and it's determined by the kind of seeds that we plant in our heart. Beginning with verse 13 out of Mark 4, it says, And Jesus said to them, Do you not understand this parable? He's talking about the parable of the sower. He said, How will you understand all the parables? In other words, the, this parable has an effect and has, an, has really the definition of all the other parables. He said, How will you then understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. And these are the ones that are sown by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves. And so only endure for a time. And afterwards, when tribulation and persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones that are sown among the thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world and deceitfulness of riches and the desires of other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on good ground who hear the word. Everybody say hear the word. 
You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So this is a production of faith, faith producing and bringing forth fruit in their lives by, by, by the Holy Spirit. He said, some and they bear fruit, some 34, some 60, and some 100. I don't want to be the 30. But there is a progression. Because as you grow, remember we, we gave the parable also in the same identical chapter that when a seed is planted, then first comes the blade, then the stalk, and then the full ear in the corn, the full harvest. So when we start out, we will see and start out with 30 in our life. We'll start out with 60, but we'll end up going for 100. So I don't want to stop at the 30 level. I don't want to stop at the 60 level. I want to go all the way where my life is fully producing fruit, 100% for the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? amen? So just like the soil of a garden has innate ability to germinate seeds and produce a crop, so your heart has the ability to produce a future crop also. There's another passage, we used this the other week, but there's also another passage here that links your heart and mind with what your future holds for you and, where, and what you can see produced in your future. It's Romans, the 12th chapter, verse 2. It connects the idea of renewing your mind and finding and fulfilling what God's will is for your life. Let me read it to you. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. My question is, do you see that connection? The way you think is tied to your future, and it's tied to understanding and knowing the will of God for your life. So let's further consider this idea of what Jesus is giving us here, with the idea of a garden, the seeds that are planted in it, and the soil, and the future crop which is ultimately produced. You don't have to be a farmer to understand these basic principles. These are principles that every one of us, any, just about every human being, we understand these principles. But it's important that we understand the different roles that the soil and the seed have. Both are extremely important. And as we see here in Mark, the fourth chapter, in the power of the sower, Jesus teaches that our heart functions like the soil inside of a garden. It has the creative ability to germinate what you plant in it and produce a crop. But the seed is vitally important also because the seed, think about it, the type of seed obviously determines what? The type of crop that comes forth in my life. Why? Because the seed has the DNA code, supernatural life, to determine and bring forth the harvest. Now listen to me, not the soil. Only the seed has that. So therefore, an apple seed produces what? Apples. Orange seeds produces what? Orange seeds. Corn seeds produce what? Corn. In reality, the soil doesn't care what type of seed that is planted. The soil will germinate whatever seed you plant in it. In a similar way, your heart acts like the soil. And that's the way God created you. Your heart will go to work on whatever seed that you give it and begin the germination process. That's the reason that Jesus said, the sower sows the word. That's the reason Jesus said, plant the seed of the Word of God on the inside of your heart. Why? Because if you plant the seed of God's Word on the inside of your heart, you're going to get a God crop. I don't know about you, but I want the harvest that God has for me. Amen? So that's the reason in Mark, the fourth chapter, verse 14, he says, the sower sows the Word. It sows the seed of God's Word. And if you apply those simple truths to what Jesus said about your heart and the seeds that you plant in it, you're going to have and end up with success in your life. It is guaranteed by God's Word. And that's the way God created you. Your heart 
will go to work on whatever seed is given to it and planted in it and it's going to start the germination process so when Jesus is using this garden illustration he tells us that our hearts are like the soil and the Word of God is like seed so ideally you will make a decision in your life to plant God's seed in the garden of your heart and when you do it is going no matter listen to this no matter what your past is no matter where you've come from and what family you've come out of no matter what the color of your skin is no matter what's happened to you in the past that has no bearing on you bringing forth a good crop that God will produce in your life if you plant the seed of God's Word. But here's the vital truth, and this is what you and I must grasp. Our hearts will germinate any type of seed that we plant in it, whether good or bad. Whether good or bad. That's the way God has designed your heart. He entrusted us with His own creative ability. Your heart has been designed to act just like the soul. And by the way, the soul is not prejudice. The soul does not discriminate. It just begins immediately to produce the crop once the seed is planted. In other words, you're never going to find the soul saying, hey, I don't like corn and I don't like corn seeds. So therefore, I refuse to allow you to plant corn seeds into my garden. You're not going to plant them here. You tell the farmer that I want apple seeds because all I like is apples. No, no, no. The soil does not discriminate. The soil basically receives whatever is planted on the inside of it. And a lot of the history of our life is because we have allowed people to plant seeds on the inside of us. Matter of fact, some people plant seeds to tell you that you'll never amount to anything. Some people plant seeds and just say you're a bad person. You're bad, you're bad, you're bad. Some people plant seeds and make you feel like that you're worthless, you're nothing. You, you, you do everything you can to please people and they plant seeds that well, no matter what you do, it's never enough. And you try to be perfect, you try to please everybody, you try to do everything, and, and, and it, never, it, it just never works out that way. And, and they're constantly planting seeds and just telling you that, that you can't do this and you'll never do that. And hey, you see all those people out there, that's not for the likes of you. That's not for you. You'll never achieve this, you'll never accomplish that. This, you, you, you can't do this. Can't, 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 can't. Never, 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 never. People plant seeds, and guess what it produces? It produces a crop on the inside of you that you feel like a failure. Sometimes people plant seed on the inside of you that literally you feel like that you can do stuff and you can accomplish things, and then you get started and you start working on something, but all of a sudden something short circuits, and you never finish it. You never accomplish it. You stop. You give up on it when you've actually got the ability to be able to do what you're, what you're fixing to do and it's like a dream on the inside of your heart why do you stop? Why, why, why can't you, why do you go from job to job to job to job to job to job you start doing good in one thing and the next thing you know that's not sad you just go to another one and another one and another one and another one let me tell you what happens to you that's because somebody has planted the seed of failure in your life Somebody has planted the seed that you'll never amount to anything. You'll never be good for nothing. You're just going to kind of drift through life. You're never going to settle down. You're never going to have what other people have. You can only just dream and be envious and jealous of what other people have. That's a lie from the pit of hell. And that's the reason that God wants you to renew your mind to what His Word says. He wants you to sow seed in your heart because your heart will literally germinate and produce whatever is sown in it. But when you sow God's Word on the inside of it, now you've got God working with you to bring the harvest to pass. To bring to pass what you never dreamed that you could have. You could never go and accomplish what you could accomplish. Even Jesus himself, listen to this. What does this mean? It means I'm totally dependent upon God. 
I have a responsibility, but I'm totally dependent upon him. Can you imagine Jesus, the son of the living God, made this statement? I can do nothing apart from my father. Whoa. Wow. God made this statement. Why is the word of God so important? God made this statement in Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter, verse 3. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. You've got to have, you've got to have food to sustain your body. We know that. He's, but he said this. He's given us revelation concerning what our life is all about. He said, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And the wonderful thing is that we have it right here. The Word of God, the Bible that you have, it literally is a bag seed. I mean, it is, it is a seed bag, and it is full of the seed. Of the, the, and the seed's got the DNA of God Himself, the life of God. So in the Bible, you have over 3,000 scriptures. You have over 3,000 seeds of the blessings of God, of what God will say to you. You have, you, have, you have the word on how much he loves you. When you, when, you, when you don't feel like that you're loved, you get yourself and you plant within you the seed of how God loves you and what God says about you and, and, and who God is. And the next thing you know, all of a sudden you're overwhelmed by his love. There's a harvest that comes up of how much God loves you. And out of that, you'll start loving other people like you've never loved before in your life. You'll love the unlovable. It won't be any longer that, oh, I love the people in China. That's easy because they live in China. But he says, he says, love your neighbor. Oh, wait a minute. You don't know my neighbor. Jesus said, love your neighbor even as you love yourself. And then you have, when I need wisdom, I don't know what to do. I need wisdom. I need revelation. I, I'm in this situation. What do I do? All of a sudden, the Word of God is full of wisdom. In other words, it makes you smarter than everybody else. That's amazing. Because the Bible says God chooses the weak things of this world. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. God chooses the weak things of this world to confound the wise. That would be me. Peace, deliverance, provision, joy, healing, salvation. And could go on and on and on and on and on. And all of this is for me to take the seed of God's Word... Isaiah 35, 10, and the ransom of the Lord shall return and come with Zion, come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads, and they shall attain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Man, I need that. I'm putting that in my heart. Mm. And all of a sudden, as soon as I put it in my heart, the Holy Spirit starts working with that now. My heart now begins to germinate that. The Holy Spirit uses that at any moment, at any time, when all of a sudden I get hit with something that, that, that I didn't see coming, and it's like my heart starts start sinking, and, and the Holy Spirit, man, He brings out this. I got trouble. Man, there's trouble. There's more trouble than I know what there it is. And I reach down into the very depths of my heart, into this treasure chest. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit, see, the Holy Spirit works with the Word. You don't have any Word? See, the Holy Spirit speaks to you through the Word. A lot of people say, well, you know, God doesn't speak to me. I've heard people say this. You don't want to go to a church where they say God speaks. The Bible's God said that idols are dumb idols. Idols don't speak. God is alive. He is alive. The Holy Spirit is alive. I told the first service... With what I see going on in the church today, I, I think we need to write another book called The Forgotten God. Who is that? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks to you. God is alive. He has a voice. He speaks. And He speaks through the voice of the Holy Spirit. And He speaks in accordance to His Word. And the more that I have the seed of God's Word on the inside of me, 
the more I hear Him speak to me in any type of situation that I may be in. Because as I meditate on God's Word, and I get God's Word on the inside of me, as I go to where the Word is being taught, and I hear the Word of God, the Holy Spirit now has a whole bag to work with. See, and so when I get into trouble, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit, He says, hey, I will bring the Word back to your remembrance. The Holy Spirit brings, brings all of a sudden, I look and boom, Psalms 91, 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be him. I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. And then I start saying, thank you, Father. I call upon you in my time of trouble right now. I thank you that you promised you would deliver me and set me free from this trouble. I thank you, Lord God, that there is nothing impossible with you. I thank you that you will deliver me and you will honor me. I don't know how it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. Because that's your word. That's the word of God. Can you say amen? So you never find the soul saying or discriminating about what's happening on the inside. It simply starts the process of creating a, pro, a crop the moment a seed is planted in it. The truth highlights the critical responsibility that you and I have, now listen to me, to control the type of seeds that are planted in our hearts. We're the ones that control the type of seeds. Now let me just say this. When you're growing up as a young man and a young woman, you do not have control over an adult speaking and planting seeds in your life. Because as you grow up, parents and other people can speak things. Hopefully what's being spoken into your life is good seed. But people can speak bad seed into your life. You have no control over that. When you're growing up, somebody just says, you're a bad boy, you're a bad girl, you're a bad boy, bad girl. That seed, that seed planted on the inside of me, and all of a sudden, next thing I know, my heart begins to germinate that I'm bad. You start hanging out with people that you're not supposed to hang out with. They're going to speak into your life, and they're going to plant seed into your life. A criminal does not become a criminal in the crib. A criminal becomes a criminal because he's hung around or she's hung around the wrong people and they've talked to them and they've planted seed on the inside of them. They've presented things to them and they've influenced them and they've planted that seed. And once that seed is planted, your heart begins to start to produce. And once it begins to produce and germinates that seed, it turns into behavior and conduct, which leads to activity. So you have to be careful what type of seed guard your heart with all diligence for out of it comes the issues of life, the course of life. You have to be careful what you hear. You want to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. You want to plant the seed of God's Word. Because once you get the seed of God's Word on the inside of you, other seed, bad seed that starts coming your way, you can reject that. You rebuke that. You resist that. Now let me tell you, Listen to this very carefully. There is somebody who does not want you to get the seed of God's Word. There is somebody that influences you and tries his best along with his organization to influence you not to come to church. Oh, he just, he'll tell you, you're too tired. Bless your heart, you've worked all weekend. This is your only day off. You don't need to come to church. You need to lay right here in bed. I'm not condemning y'all that are sitting there with your coffee in your hand and you're in bed. I know sometimes we are. Sometimes people have third shifts and stuff like that. I understand that, and I know that. I mean, even my own wife, she's at home overcoming, right? So I know that. But when you get into certain situations, the enemy will make you, he'll just do everything he can because he wants, you, he wants to steal the word from you. He not only wants to steal the word from you, but he doesn't want you to get the word. So he'll, he'll get you to come up with all kinds of excuses. Why not to go to church? Not to become a part of the discipleship classes. Why not to get in a small group? 
Why not? To, he doesn't want you hanging out with believers just like you. Because iron sharpens iron. He knows, if he, he knows if you begin to hang out with believers, he knows that if believers get together and unify and start praying, he knows the Scripture. He knows the Scripture as well as anybody does. He quoted it to Jesus on the temptation. He knows where two or three are gathered. He knows Jesus is right there. He knows that if two of, two of you shall agree on earth as coming into agreement and harmony about anything, he knows God will do it. So what does he want to do? He wants to keep you in strife. He'll sow seeds of strife. He'll sow seeds of jealousy and envy on the inside of you. But I will tell you what else he'll do. He'll constantly bring up your past. He'll constantly accuse you about the mistakes that you've made in the past, even though God has forgiven you. So the Bible says in Mark the 14th chapter, I mean Mark the 4th chapter, in verse 14 he says, the sower sows the seed. And then in verse 15 he says, the devil comes to take away the word. And he says he comes immediately. He comes immediately to take away the word. Why does he come immediately to take away the word? Because he knows that the germination process will start. So he wants to stop it. He knows that when it starts germinating, you're going to have success. So he will come and he will steal the Word. He'll do everything he can to steal the Word of God. He will bring distractions in your life. He'll put obstacles in your life. Just like right now, the majority of you, instead of looking at me and listening to me, you're looking at the devil. Hello, that's what's wrong with so many people in the body of Christ today. All you do is looking at the devil and what the devil is doing instead of what God has said and what God is getting ready to do. You want to focus in on what he's doing? You want to focus in on what God has planted the seed of God's Word. He hates the seed of God's Word. Because Jesus was the Word and the Word defeated Him. No. Amen? What, what does He want you to do? See, when you get the seed of God's life on the inside of you and it's planted, it has the DNA of God Himself. It's His Word. It has the life of God. And once you get it on the inside of you, what happens is you become pregnant with that Word. He wants you to abort the Word. He wants you to abort it. He wants you to have a spiritual abortion. He doesn't want the life of that to come forth. Because the life in every seed has a destiny and has a purpose. And will bring success. So, why does he come immediately to steal the word of God? Listen to this. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate it in it day and night. That's the key for it not departing from your mouth. You meditate in it. You get the word of God, the seed of God's word on the inside of you. And then it starts coming out of your mouth. That you may observe to do all that is written in it. Listen to this. For then. Are you ready? For then. When you do this. For then you will make your way prosperous. And you will have good success. Why does he want to steal the word of God? Because Proverbs the 4th chapter. Verse 20. Says this. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my saying. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? Because they're going to grow. They're going to germinate. For they are life to those who find them and health, health to all your flesh. See, we can go on and on. We can talk about the love of God. We can take the seed. The Lord your God in the midst, the mighty one, will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. In other words, when he's shouting, when he's raising his voice, when he's going crazy, when he's trying to tell you that God doesn't love you and care about you, all of a sudden, God will quiet you with his love. And he will rejoice over you with singing. I'm putting that in my heart. 
He can't stand that. So what does the Bible say? The Bible says right here in Mark, the fourth chapter, listen to what it says. And these are the ones by the wayside. The word wayside means journey in the course of life. Where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word. Now, have you ever thought about this? How does he take away the word? You have to look up the definition there and understand what the word takes away means. It means, first of all, that when you start getting the word, you start coming and hearing the word. You start meditating on the word. He knows it's going to produce on the inside of your life. So he will bring circumstances and he will bring problems and other situations that will come. He, that is what he does to take away. And one of the definitions of the word takes away means to raise the voice against. That's right. Nobody loves you. You are worthless. You are a nobody. Why are you even here? God does not love you. Nobody loves you. Give up, because you have no chance. Why? He's not going to listen to you. He's not even going to answer your prayers. The Bible says that if I pray anything according to the will of God, He hears me. No. And if He hears me, no. I believe and I know that if He hears me, I have whatever no. I have asked no. of Him. God loves me. He does not lie. No. Listen to this. Here's what he does. Here's what the devil does. The Bible says he comes to takes away. Takes away means this. It means to keep the mind in suspense. The word suspense means mental uncertainty and indecision. That's right. God does not love you. He never loves you. He don't even care about you. So why do you even try to come here? I will always have the victory. I am always here. Because you are worthless. You are pathetic. And you will always stay here. The Bible says that God has given me beauty for ashes. No. I am the righteousness of no. God in Christ Jesus. No, no weapon formed against me no. can prosper. I am more than no. a conqueror. God says you will reign in life through Jesus Christ. No. No. But the, the word takes away also means this. He comes to make you doubt God's love, to doubt God's word. Because a lot of times when you pray, there is a length and a period and a lapse of time before you receive. And in that lapse of time, he's going to come to attack your mind. He's going to try to make you doubt because he's going to start telling you that, see, it's not happening. It's not taking place. What way is it even getting worse? That's right. You think you got healed here tonight? I don't think so. Because you got that pain. It's coming back up inside. I know it. You think you all here? He think he's healed you now? He will never heal you. Because he don't even hear you. But you he, know what the Bible says? You know what the no, Word of God says? No. The Word of God says in 1 Peter, the 5th no. chapter, verse 8 and 9. He knows it better than you no. know it. No. It says, be sober, be vigilant, no. because your adversary, no. your adversary, the devil. No. Who is your adversary? No. It's the devil. You wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and no. rulers of darkness and spiritual no. hosts in high places. The Bible says, don't be ignorant of the devices no. of the devil. No. He walks around like a roaring lion. No. But let me tell you who the real line is. No. The real line no. is the line of Judah. No. No. Jesus is the line no. of Judah. No. He's only like a line. Jesus is no. the line of Judah. No. He says he walks around like a roaring no. lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. No. Stand against him. No. Withstand him. No. Not in your own power, in your own strength. It says resist him steadfast in faith. No. In faith. No. What is faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. No. 
of God. When he tells you that you're not going to have enough, you pull out the seed. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed when you go out. He says, no, you're not going to be healed. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to all those who find them and health to all their flesh. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, no. we are no. healed. No. Hallelujah. What do you resist him with? You resist him with the word of God. What is the word of God? Ephesians, the sixth chapter says that the word of God is the sword of the Spirit. It is powerful. It is alive. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. God loves me. He cares for me. He will not leave me nor forsake me. Hallelujah. The word is the victory. It is a victory that we have. It is the word of God. No weapon formed against you can prosper. No evil can befall you. He's given you all power over the power of the enemy. And the wicked one touches you not. When he comes to touch you, say, get your filthy hands off of me and off of my family. The word of God that is in your mouth, sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God, which is spirit and in life. And how do you deal with the spirit of death? How do you deal with the spirit of failure and unworthiness that he will put on you? You take the word, you put it on the inside of your heart. And it is there. And once you get it on the inside of your heart, the moment he shows up, you cast down every vain imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You pull out from your heart the seed that has been growing, the harvest that is there, the harvest that is already there of healing, the harvest is already there of blessing, the harvest is already there of wisdom and knowledge and understanding, the harvest that is the harvest of God, the seed that is the Word of God. Put it on the inside, and when he shows up, you bring that word out. Notice, it is the sword of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, once it comes out of your mouth, he takes that word, and he sends it to its target and where it needs to go, just like when David took his sling against Goliath and took that stone and threw that thing, the Holy Spirit of God had that stone and took it right to Goliath's temple and buried it in his temple and he died. I'm telling you right now, you've got to take the Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit, and you've got to wheel it and you've got to do it and you know what the Bible says one of David's men he got into his pea field his own pea field butter bean patch this is what the Bible says the Bible says he got in it and he defended his pea patch and he took his sword and he fought until he killed every single Philistine that his sword literally was bound to his hand and he fought that his sword became one with him he couldn't even get it out of his hand because his hand gripped around it don't ever let loose of the word of God don't ever put it down protect your butter bean field protect what God has given you protect your patch protect your ground protect your family protect Protect! Protect!
That's the reason. That's the reason. That's the reason that you have a local church. That's the reason that you have discipleship classes on Wednesday night. That's the reason that your children are over there being planted. Being planted. The soul of their heart is being planted with God's Word. You need to plant every day in your kids' lives. Plant good seed. Not bad seed. Good seed. And I'm going to tell you this. When the devil comes to show up at your house, you take the sword out. You speak it. You don't keep silent. You keep silent. He will whop you upside the head. You don't keep silent. You take the word and you use the word. Praying always in the spirit. Take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and wheel it and use it and resist the devil and he will flee from you he has to it's God's word he has to get him out of your house get him out of your business get him out of your relationships God didn't give you that word just so you can sleep under it at night or put it up on your coffee table as a big heirloom he gave you the word to plant it on the inside of your heart so that you would be a warrior, so that you would be a, a, a king and a queen representing the kingdom of God, using your authority. That's who you are. Don't put this in the closet. Keep it in the midst of your heart. When the time comes to use it, stand. And when you've done all to stand, stand therefore. Knowing that the word cannot be defeated. Which means you cannot be defeated if you don't give up and you don't give in. Let it come out. Listen, it's in your heart. Let it come out of your mouth. Speak it. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody stand up and give God praise in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise Him. Come on and speak the Word. Come on and declare your seed. Come on, plant seed, plant seed, plant seed, plant seed. Jesus, I thank you, I praise you, I worship you, I glorify your name. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm more than a conqueror because of Jesus, because of the Word. I will not be silent. Satan, you will not shut me up. You will not put me into self-pity. You will not depress me because God is the joy of my heart. Jesus is my strength. I'll run and not be weary. I'll walk and not faint. I will mount up His wings as eagles. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of His benefits. Who forgives all my iniquities, my iniquities. Oh, He'll come at you from your past. My iniquities have been forgiven. I've been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Heals all my diseases and delivers me from destruction. He is my wisdom. Praise God. He is my wisdom. He is my wisdom. Children are a gift from God. I will bring forth children in the name. I will bear children. He gives me the loss for our inheritance. I'm telling you right now, you think all, all these people who came down here today and just came to church today, where did they come from? Because we say, God, you promised in Psalms, the second chapter, that you will give us the loss for our inheritance. And no man can come to the Father unless you draw. So therefore, I'm asking you in Jesus' name that the Holy Spirit will go to the north, the south, the east, and the west. Draw the lost. Bring them in. Not only here at Covenant of Love, but all over this city and all over this county. Bring them in, Lord, that they will be saved. I'm pregnant with that dream and what happens every Sunday in both services.
people get saved. People's lives changed. Why? Because we believe. I'm going to tell you right now, don't settle for anything less than God's best. The best is yet to come because we are growing in the Word of God. Let Jesus be the center of it all. Jesus be the center of it all. He's the center of everything. In other words, Jesus is the Word. The Word is Jesus. Let the Word be the center of everything. Amen? So it, it, I want you to have fun. I, 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 don't, I don't have a problem with watching football and all that and, and whatever you want to do. I enjoy watching football, but it's not the center of my life. The Word is the center of my life. Can you say amen? amen? Come on, give Him one more big praise. Give Him one more big praise in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. So I say to you, I say to you, you go from this place knowing who you are. Not who you used to be, who you are right now. And understand who dwells on the inside of you. And quit allowing the devil to come and steal and take and rob you. Stand up for what you believe. Can you say amen? amen. Let me, let me, before we close today, let me, let me make one announcement that's so vitally important. That's where we're all working together. But uh, we've had some of our uh, teachers uh, in our Wednesday night service. Uh, some have been deployed. Others have been transferred. And so we have, uh, we have openings right now for four women and four men in our Wednesday nights to help us to teach our young people to sow the Word of God on the inside of them. It's great if it can be husband and wives or, or, or individuals. It really doesn't matter. But we really have a need. We need four people to take that role. We can't allow what we're doing on Wednesday nights to drop. We can't allow it in any way, shape, or form. We've got to continue... To, to, to do that, okay? The last thing I want to say to you also is you've noticed that uh, Pastor Thomas has been up here leading... Oh, there he is right there. Hey, Pastor Thomas. Pastor Thomas has been leading us and, uh, and, and of course, Brian and the orchestra. And I know you've noticed that Chrissy has not been up here for a little time. Chrissy is taking a sabbatical. Chrissy is, you know, she's been battling some things in her life. And, uh, and she's just taking a sabbatical for right now. She's still coming to church and everything, but she just needs some time of refreshing and restoration. That, that happens to every one of us at times. Can you say amen? And, and, and she's, she's actually praying because there are some things that she, you know, that, that uh, she talked to Tave and I about. And, uh, and, and she was talking to me about, you know, it's, it's always been a, I, I've wanted to write. She said, I have books on the inside of me, you know. But... Uh, and, and, and what I'm saying to you is that Chrissy has not left the church. She's here at the church. But there could be another direction that she may find herself going in of what God may calling her to. She'll never stop singing. I can tell you that right now. Okay? But th there may be a different direction that she's going uh, into. So, uh, so she wanted me to tell you that. She wanted me to tell you there's nothing wrong. It's just that God is directing her. There's a new season in her life, okay? But at the same time, I want you to be praying for her because she has been attacked physically. And we, as the body, we need to be lifting her up and praying for her, amen? She's fighting the fight of faith. But you, I want every one of us to zero in on that also as, 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 we, uh, as we go forward in what God's called us to do. Can you say amen? Well, I'm just going to bless you. I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing over you today. And I want you to leave out of this place today with your head looking at Jesus. Your head and your heart on the Word of God. Remember, He's the center of it all. It's all about Him. And I want you to, when you walk out of this place today, I want you to walk out with a confidence knowing that the Word of God and God is on your side. And if God be for you, 
who can be against you. Amen? And here's another thing. You are not going to allow. You are not going to allow the enemy to beat you up any longer. You're going to use the sword that God has sent, and you're going to start speaking to the circumstance. You're going to start speaking to those thoughts that are haunting you and coming into your mind, which are lying to you and trying to bring you down. You're going to stand up and be the man and woman of God that God's called you to be, and you're going to address it, and you're going to speak it, and you're going to let the two-edged sword come out of your mouth, and you're going to cut him up. Amen? So that he knows that when he comes to your house, he's probably going to get cut a lot because of the sword of the Spirit. Can you say amen? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now and ask you, let this word, let it absolutely explode. Let it germinate. Let it bring forth the life that it was created to bring forth. And I pray now as each and every person leaves this place, as they go out, they go out winners. They'll go out conquerors. They go out, Father God, knowing that they rule and reign in this life, in the spiritual realm. And Father, we just thank you and we just praise you because, Lord, you are our God. And Father, today we make a decision. We're not waiting to, we're not waiting to New Year's to make a resolution, but today we make a decision. We're going to fill our heart. We're going to fill our soul with the seed of God's Word. We're going to do it in church. We're going to do it at home. We're going to do it everywhere. We're going to, those of us, those of us that have children, we're going to fill our children with the seed of God's Word. We're not going to tell them what they can't do as much as we're going to tell them also what they can do through the Word of God. So, Father, I pray you bless each and every person. As we go forth from here, we're blessing the city, we're blessing the field, we're blessing our coming in, and we're blessing our going out. And we declare today we're the head and not the tail. We're above only, and we are not beneath. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, God bless you.